Hello and welcome to this presentation about different types of food you can grow in your garden now in September for a harvest in uh, late fall or early winter. My name is Jen and I'm a librarian here at the Naperville Public Library and today I have the pleasure of introducing our presenter, Sophia Hassan, who is a garden coach and the founder of Culinary Gardens, a local business here in Naperville. Let's get started. Hi there, my name is Sophia Hassan. I am the owner of Culinary Gardens here in Naperville. And I'm gonna be doing a video about what you guys can plant in September. A lot of people think that once the summer is over and your tomatoes and cucumbers have been harvested, you can close up your garden and pretty much you're done until spring. So I'm going to show you what you can plant in September. This is called the cool season. That basically will last until we get like a frost. So the cool season starts basically when the summer temperatures start winding down and you feel some of those cooler days in fall. And it goes all the way up until when winter starts. So some things will survive with a little cover through the winter and some things you will be harvesting before, before the frost date. So I'm going to go over the different categories of seeds that you can plant in your fall garden and I will go into a little bit of detail about each one. So first I'm going to talk about peas. A lot of us plant peas in the spring but we don't know or don't realize that we can also plant them in the fall when the temperatures are starting to come down. So we, here I'm showing you some Amish snap peas and here I have some sugar pod peas, some sugar peas. So typically what I do is I take the seeds and I soak them for like maybe eight hours or overnight. Don't soak them too long because the seeds will literally drown. Um, so that just helps open up the seed casing a little bit so that when you plant them, they will germinate faster. So when you plant these, I would space these out, um, maybe, you know, a few inches, and I would make sure there's some sort of support behind them. If you have a trellis or some bamboo sticks, whatever you have is fine. And just make sure that they have some support and as they start to grow, just trellis them. Just tie them loosely. You can just use twine, virola twine, which is inexpensive, and then just attach them as they grow. So these are, these are a nice crop to start in, this, in the cool season in September. The next crop that you can plant are beets. Beets are a great cool season crop. They don't like the really intense warm weather of spring of summer so if you're planting them in the summer you're probably going to have more success if they have a lot of shade so these are really good for the fall so you can plant these just space them out nicely make sure your soil has a good level of phosphorus not too much nitrogen otherwise you're just going to get a bunch of leafy greens and not enough of the beets growing under the soil this is one of the larger categories basically we have the greens we have kale we have asian greens and you can plant these. These are pretty much mostly direct seeded other than the kale. Kale I usually start from a small seedling. You might be able to pick them up at the nursery or find somebody who has started um, plants. So if you can find starts for kale that's great. Spinach is another is part of the same like I call it the leafy green category. So spinach is another one. It loves the cooler weather. Chard, Swiss chard is another one. Some of these are great over the winter. If you cover them lightly, like kale, my kale survived all through winter last year here in Chicago um, with a little greenhouse plastic over it. Another one is Asian greens. So this is a new variety for me. So this one, it's kind of like a mustard. Um, you know, tot soy is another one. Uh, sometimes bok choy also will do well. And then you can do different kinds of chard. This is a neon glow chard mix, like a rainbow chard. These are super resilient and these will survive through the winter with a little bit of cover. Plant them in September so the roots can get nice and strong before the weather gets really cold and you can be harvesting chard and kale throughout the colder months. This is another kind of kale, mizuna kale, which you can direct seed. And it's got this lovely purple pink stem and the leaves are smaller than scotch kale and you can direct seed this and this one does very nicely as well. Just space out the seeds. Don't, you don't want them to be too close together. 
and then this will also thrive in the colder weather. This is a great new crop that a lot of people are unfamiliar with, kohlrabi. So this is kind of a fun one. You can direct seed this one. And it's, it's an old German variety. And it's kind of a fun little plant. It looks a little bit like a UFO. Um, and people harvest the ball. And then you slice it and then you can eat that. So this also will do well in the colder season. And then, of course, you have your regular turnips. Turnips also like the colder weather, just like beets, so you can plant those and then be eating those later in the fall. This is another popular category is carrots. People don't realize that you can plant carrots in the fall and in within like 60 to 65 days, uh, you know, you can have some carrots. Thank you for showing us all those great options, Sophia. It's encouraging to see that even with fall right around the corner, there are still lots of different types of food we can be growing in our gardens at home. If you're interested in learning more about extending your growing season, we have lots of books here at the library that can help you learn more. Here's just a few that I'd like to recommend. The first book I'd like to recommend is The Gardener's Year by DK Publishing. This book is broken down into four sections, one for each season of the year, and provides detailed instructions about a variety of different produce you can grow during each season. This book is available in print at the library for you to check out. The second book I'd like to recommend is The Year-Round Vegetable Gardener by Nikki Jabor. Nikki Jabor is a, a gardener from Canada, so she knows that they're too about growing in the winter months. She's broken her book down into two parts. The first is called Stretching the Growing Season. This section provides a lot of detailed instruction on how to extend your season using a variety of different methods. Part two of this book is called Growing the Right Crops, and this provides a very comprehensive list of a variety of crops that you can grow well into the colder months of the year. This book is available in print to come check out at the library, and it's also available digitally on Hoopla. The third book that I would like to recommend today is Year-Round Gardening by Lena Israelson. Year-Round Gardening includes a variety of tips from many experts in gardening for how to extend your season, what to plant when, and when, how to get the most out of all of that produce. This book is available in print for checkout at the library as well as digitally on Hoopla. Last but not least, the final book I'd like to recommend today is The Four Season Farm Gardener's Cookbook by Barbara Damrosh and Elliot Coleman. This is a two-part book. This book is pulling double duty as both a garden guide and as a cookbook. There, uh, the authors provide detailed instructions about the different types of produce to grow, when, and how, but they go the extra mile and then telling you how to cook a lot of delicious meals with that produce that you put so much labor into growing and harvesting. And this book is available digitally only, but it's on both Hoopla and Access 360. Thank you for joining us for this video on garden tips. If you have any other questions, you want to learn more, or you just simply need some help getting access to those digital resources, stop by the library. We'll be happy to help you. Thank you and happy gardening.